All right, I haven't made a video in a while, but uh, it's been really busy. So my real job has been keeping me busy. And then this time of year, everything grows so fast that it's about grass management. So I have four new yearlings. That is Hank. He moves a lot. What's up, Hank? And then here we got hashtag. But uh, I got the cows out on pasture. Let's see if they come running up to me. Uh, I just clipped the tops off. They've been on this for probably about a month, almost a month. <coughs> and I redid this one. This was a, used to be a cornfield. And then uh, I disked it up and I planted a pasture grass, which came in pretty nice. It's still, you know, we got some thin spots. And then out in the middle, there's a low spot out there and water kind of pools and so the grass didn't grow well, real well. Um, hey Snickers. Hey. Yeah. Oh, uh, they got the they got the dairy poops. They get out on green grass and it takes about a month. Probably a little longer for their poop to get solid again. They just got diarrhea anyway this is uh the new ocho that replaced the other ocho that we butchered so we're calling this one ocho nuevo um but uh anyway you can see i clipped it i clipped it down and the idea is uh right here you don't want this to go to seed. So, where it starts going to seed, the cows don't go for that as much. They don't like it. Uh, and so they'll kinda, they'll kinda get picky. And so what you wanna do is, I just went and set my mower uh, just to clip the tops of those seeds off. And that'll do a couple things. One, that'll help the grass kinda propagate itself. Uh, and thicken up but two then the the cows will actually eat then on the stems and if you let it go to seed and get too tall then a lot of the nutrients are gone out of the out of the grass from what I know so that is Reese's uh, one of the new ones so we got Reese's we got Hank hey stop it She likes to play games, but she doesn't realize that she weighs like a thousand pounds. And so when she bumps into you, it's ridiculous. Uh, and then the smallest one is Bill. Uh, that's my son's, he named it, named him Bill. Uh, so we have like two cows with like people names. So anyway, neighbor Dave, he's just finishing cutting some ditches. Make sure they don't get overgrown. So I took, this field's about an acre and a half, and I rotate from here to my other field. And uh, so this one I need to get about two, I'm hoping to get about two or three more weeks on. Stay back, you're gonna hurt me. I cannot turn my back on that one now because Snickers thinks it's a fun game to like run up behind you, but she's gonna like clean my clock and trample me to death. Yeah, see, she like comes running up. Hey, stop it. So, anyway, and then uh, this one, hashtag is, she's kind of the bully of the bunch. But uh, I'll hop the gate into my other, other field. You can see north field, uh, it's like I said, about an acre and a half. And then the south field's bigger. 
Uh, I angled this fence because this usually floods and there's my duck blind, so it gives me a place to hunt ducks. But this is the smaller corral and then I have my winter corral right there. So that way I can herd them into here and then into the smaller one. Uh, this is, because it's so low, I don't, I don't really screw around with trying to make this part of this pasture better. It's mostly just canary grass, which has a, a really good uh, protein count as long as you keep it short. Um, so you want these nice flat leaves. And if you let it get very tall, if you know canary grass, it starts to get really stemmy and they don't like that either. So I usually keep this pretty short as much as I can. So coming through here again, I clip this. Um, so it's probably uh, about eight to 10 inches tall. Uh, just enough to take the, the seeds off the top. So I have some dandelion in here and I've got some buttercup and I can't stand that. Um, so buttercup, I spray, uh, MCPA is what I have or Trimec will kind of do it too, but uh, MCPA is pretty good. I've had good luck with it. I sprayed last year in parts, but it's almost like you got to do it every year. <laughs> and the reason I spray buttercup uh, so just like dandelions, buttercup, the cows don't eat because these actually burn their mouth. So it, you can either mow it, and once you mow it and it dies, then they will they will eat it uh, once it dies because it's for some reason or another. So if you end up with it in your hay, don't worry about it. Uh, once it's dead, it's fine. They'll eat it. It won't cause them any issues. But if it's alive, they will avoid areas with a bunch of buttercup um, because it burns their mouth. So so anyway, I got a couple of other low spots, but I just sprayed, I just got done spraying this um, and because my fields are small, I usually just take like a backpack sprayer and I go and just hit where, where I have buttercups coming up and then um, you know, I'll just, I'll do that. And since the cows aren't on here, I'm not worried about, um, about them eating the spray or anything like that. So, uh, like I said, I got about three more weeks before they're on here and you can see just a little bit of hay left. This is, I spread manure, the dry manure in this field, um, this spring, and it has helped it quite a bit. So, I can definitely tell where I hit with the manure and then where I didn't. Um, so over there, it's not greening up quite as well and not growing near as well. And that was the lightest area um, because I'd usually start back behind me and work my way out here. And then once the spreader was empty, I'd turn around. Um, so not a big deal, but uh, God, the other thing, I found some thistle over there, so I'm gonna have to get gangster on that. I do not want thistle. That stuff's terrible. Let's see if I can remember to lock the gate. Finished putting a cut on the grass today, so it's looking good. Hi, Nala. Yeah, you're crazy. Uh -huh. Like three years old. Might as well be like six months old. And she digs, which is super frustrating. Can't have anything nice around here. All right, we've made basically a, a full circle and I'll show you a couple other things. So on that north field, uh, I planted some blueberry bushes here. Yum yum. And some apple trees out by the, the road there. That's fun. So hopefully 
Someday I'll have some apples. Um, all right. What was I going to show you? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I got... Um, I got 21714. This is going to go down on the yard. So this stuff is by far uh, for like a complete season fertilizer. Um, this is the best stuff I've found. It has a slow release nitrogen. And so like some of that, uh, you go buy like Scott's or some crap from big box stores. Uh, you don't get a slow release nitrogen and so you'll get a, you know a few weeks on your nitrogen cycle and shoot by like july you're running like a 2800 um, which is the first number is going to be your nitrogen uh, and then you run down right here so you have seven percent phosphate and then uh, whatever this is the uh, soluble potash or uh, i don't know so that's your last number so as you get later in the growing season, you want a higher nitrogen number because that's what's going to give you that like growth and that green look. And then these other ones will help your roots develop and actually grow better roots. So this time of year, you can run that 21714. As you move into like later July and August around here, where we're not getting rain, then I'll run higher and higher nitrates. So I'll probably run two cycles of this and then that'll take me into like August. And then in August, I'll probably run like, uh, like a straight 28, 2800, but I'll get the stuff from CHS because they got a, a slow, slow release. And then I got some pure urea. So this is 4600, right? So uh, essentially this is 46% nitrogen, right? So if you look over here, I'm at 21 uh, total nitrogen. Okay, and here I'm at 46. So this is like basically, hey, I just want to create a crap ton of growth. And I asked them what my spread rate would be because somebody told me that you, you run like 200 pounds an acre. And I asked uh, the folks over at CHS and they said that would be extremely high without anything else. So, so if you were going to run like... If I was going to run this, I could run 200 pounds an acre because uh, I'm only running 20%. So they said if you're running straight urea uh, on the field, they said 100 pounds an acre. Um, I'm going to wait until after I pull the cows off, although I've heard that uh, it gets down in there and the cows having a little bit of this isn't going to be bad for them. Um, but just to be safe, I'll wait till they graze that down three more weeks. I'll hit it with this uh, and then that'll help that field really take off. So since I have six cows now and I only have about three and a half acres to graze on, I am severely taxing my fields. Two of them are getting butchered in July. So the Snickers, the Shorthorn, and then uh, hashtag the Angus, the biggest Angus out of there. Gosh, I got... Cats are just slaying animals. They've got two little bunnies, a couple of birds and mice. They're going to town. Love it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to hit that north field with the urea after I pull the cows off in like three more weeks. And then that way that'll help me support those six cows until July, uh, mid-July when two of them are gone. And then things will slow down a little bit and I'll be down to four and my fields can support for. So anyway, that's, uh, that's all I got for today. Sorry it's been so long, but uh, you know, if you have any other questions or whatever on, uh, on the FERT or uh, what I'm putting down and how I'm managing my pastures, go ahead and shoot me a comment or something. I'll, I'll try to help you out. Oh yeah, I also got my um, bag. So that is, show you what I get here. So this is a Corral livestock dust. I get it. Uh, it's so you can do beef, uh, swine. So what I'll do when I get pigs, which I don't know when they're coming. It's, it seems like it's hard to get a hold of animals these days. Um, is when I clean out their pen, 
I'll, I'll throw some of this on the floor and then um, that way it kind of keeps the, the flies down and stuff. And then I'll throw a few other fly traps. But for, for the cows, So for beef and dairy cattle right here, so horn flies, lice, face flies, basically this just, this will keep your cows comfortable. If you look at like when it gets warm and they got flies all over them, they'll go hit that bag and it gets that dust on them and it helps keep the flies off. They don't get chewed up as much. They're way more comfortable. They're more likely to keep eating. And then twice a year, uh, I do this. So Ivermectin topical, so it's a pour on. They have a little weight chart. You can buy these in, in bulk, but uh, since I usually do a dose in the spring and a dose in the fall, right when I bring them in for the winter, um, I just get the small stuff because I don't want it to go bad and or, or anything like that. And then I just got, because it's a pain in the butt for me to, to pour them with that bottle, I just got a gun, a dose gun. So this will, you can set to, uh, whatever the measurements are. So that has a chart on there. Anyway, so getting after it, get, keeping, keeping the cows comfortable, keep them eating. All right, talk to you later.